Amen. 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 Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tuum liarbus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora moitis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Brethren Christ, laudetur Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders of the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. It is a great day to be a Catholic because it is Catholic Thanksgiving, y'all. It is the original Thanksgiving Day. Martin Miss. That's right. The original Thanksgiving. Also Remembrance Day in Europe, remembering the armistice that was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th month of the uh, on the 11th day of that 11th month, 11 11 11. Ending the suicide of Europe. Unfortunately, the Treaty of Versailles was not a just peace leading to World War II with the rest is history. In America, in the United States, it is Veterans Day. So we thank you for your service, all veterans of the American Armed Forces, as well as all the other armed forces, praying for peace, especially in this difficult time with many scary conflicts going around across the globe. So as always, we begin with the Harrison family. If you do not know how to get this calendar, I'm still getting people who ask me about this calendar. Which is great because I want to tell you about it. This is the Liturgy of the Home calendar. This is what I use with my kids. They love it. Your kids would love it too. Liturgyofthehome.com. And it has the traditional calendar on it. So yesterday was the fifth resumed Sunday after Epiphany. Um, and two other numberings are in the Byzantine and, and the new Roman Rite, uh, which we've covered on preparation of Holy Sacrifice. But today is Martin Miss Catholic Thanksgiving, y'all. This was the original thanksgiving in christendom western europe and here over here at one peter five you can go to forgotten customs of martin miss and saint martin's lent you can learn about this feast day all the great things great traditions with that it's a great feast day uh to go through and uh it's the second catholic mardi gras of the year so saint martin's lent begins tomorrow and that so that's the fasting all the way up to Christmas. There's different customs of fasting in the West regarding Chris and Christmas, but there is also a fasting period in the East in the Byzantine tradition. And so there's a lot of information on here. You can join the Fellowship of Saint Anthony. That's our fasting group at one at uh, Meaning of Catholic. We offer fasting in particular for priests and seminarians. We are a lay apostolate, and we want to offer this up for priests and seminarians. And you can also join our Bible reading group. We read the entire Bible every year. We're about to restart the whole Bible reader beginning in Advent. So if you've ever thought about wanting to read the entire Bible, you can you can take on the liturgical annual Bible reading. So all the readings ha are, are modeled after the traditional office of Matins. So you can get a lot of that from Matins, but not everything. So we added in everything that's missing from the traditional office of Matins. But at Matins reads through Isaiah, beginning at Advent for obvious reasons. But we also add the Book of Wisdom because the Book of Wisdom is not, is not present in the traditional office of readings, traditional Matins. So we had to add that in and it connects with the theme of Advent. But you can also join, if you want to go, uh, the fasting rules for our Lay Sedality at 1 Peter 5 are a little bit more hardcore. Uh, so if you're, you're ready to take on more fasting, our uh, Lay Sodalities has about 150 people at Meaning of Catholic. And then over at 1 Peter 5, we've got about 450 people doing the Fellowship of St. Saint, Saint Nicholas, which takes on a little bit more. But if you want to join us for St. Martin's Lent, I promise your Christmas will never be the same. This Christmas will be a totally different experience for you if you fast for 40 days. Trust me, it'll be totally different. In a good way. So great time to take on some more fasting tomorrow. And then tomorrow, so we have Martin of Tours. That's that's who Martin Miss is all about. Roman soldier turned monk, a great uh saint of Europe. And then tomorrow is Pope Saint Martin. He fought against the uh he was conf he ended up being a red martyr. Um but it's also the new feast of St. Josephat. He got transferred over to Tuesday. Um, 
but he's on Thursday in the 62 missile. But also, one of the great traditions that Matthew Pleasy put out in Restoring Lost Customs of Christendom is that there's all these All Saint Days of November. You First of all, you have the Octave of All Saints, which is great. But we also have these All Saint Days. So November 12th is the Feast of All Dominican Saints. It's a great day to celebrate, especially if you're a Third Order Dominican. But we can all thank God for what the OPs have done for the church. Uh, then we have St. Francis Cabrini, one of the great American saints. And that's also the same, that's, that is the feast of all Benedictine saints. So if you are a, a Benedictine oblate or a Benedictine monk, um, I am certainly an aspiring Benedictine oblate. I've never actually become a formal oblate, but I would love to someday. Um, I'm definitely a Benedictine to a strong degree. So definitely a great day for Benedictines as well. And then, as I said, St. Joseph at the great Eastern Catholic martyr saint, the really the godfather of really all Uniat Catholics, um, but uh, it, it really a great martyr saint, a, a great, great uh, saint to invoke, um, something that I'm very passionate about as well. I'm working on just a quick update. I, there's two books that I'm, I'm working on that are coming out through St. Paul Center. The first one is about Eastern Orthodoxy in general, which will tell my story of being Eastern Orthodox and coming to communion with Rome. And it, it'll kind of be a testimony to grace and also apologetic against uh, the various Greek schisms, uh, very much like what St. Josephat did, which got him martyred. And then the second book that is is forthcoming from St. Paul Center is a book about the Russian Catholic Church of the Byzantine Rite. And there's all these incredible connections between Fatima and that particular church. And it's quite remarkable and needs to be better known. So I'm really excited about that book as well. So if those are the books I'm working on. Just a, a heads up. Guild members will definitely get promo copies and help us with the launching of the books. So if you want uh, promo copies as well as free books on other things, you can go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register to join us for that. Uh, what's next? We've got the 15th is St. Albert the Great. St. Albert the Great is, is in particular, he's, he, he's one of the few saints who gets the title the Great, which is very interesting because uh, you know, you have St. Leo the Great, St. Gregory the Great, sometimes Pope St. Nicholas the Great is called the Great as well. Uh, modern devotion to John Paul II sometimes calls him the Great. But Albert the Great is very interesting because he's really the OP, speaking of OPs, he's the OP who, the Dominican, who really brings Aristotle back into the West and very controversially, because Aristotle was obviously pagan, pre-Christian. And he and then his disciple, St. Thomas Aquinas, were quite controversial. They were kind of the progressives in, in a good sense. They were progressives in a good sense at this time. So they're bringing Aristotle to bear upon the scholastic tradition at the time. And one of the things that makes St. Albert very great is that he's really one of the big scientists He's a big, huge scientist. Michaela Harrison, I, I think that's the reason for her putting this globe here in his depiction. Um, but one of the things you can read, what my favorite, really my my favorite text from E. Michael Jones is Logos Rising. I know, I know some Catholics don't like E. Michael Jones. I understand you don't have to agree with everything he says, but you really, before you start criticizing E. Michael Jones, you have to read Logos Rising. In my opinion, this is one of the most important books of the 21st century. I, I mean, I'm I'm willing to say that uh, at least, you know, we're in 2024. So I mean, one of the most important books of the first quarter of the 21st century right here. Logos Rising. You really need to buy this. Uh, I should mention, too, he just came out with. Um, he just came out with uh, second edition of Libido Dominandi, too. A very, very important text as well. 
and it's it's called libido dominandi sexual liberation for political control so it's all about how the enemies of christ have used pornography for political control and they've done this since the french revolution and and the the um painting on the front is obviously delilah and samson so that you know this is not this is nothing new really nothing new but it's become increasingly important to face this in the modern period but anyways logos rising in this text there's a chapter called the beginning of science and what's so fascinating about this i'm not i'm not very good not very good scientist myself so i i i was but this was this was written in in uh plain enough language so that me not being very good at science could really understand it and what's amazing is that he really talks about he talks about the mohammedans and the Moha how the mohammedans they translated aristotle because the Syriac Christians, because the Mohammedans had invaded the Persian Empire, they'd taken over the Persian Empire, the Persian Empire had fallen, never to arise again. And they had all this bureaucracy, which was filled with the Syriac Christians, and the Syriac Christians translated the Greek logos, that is Aristotle, Plato, all the, the Greek learning, they translated it into Arabic. And then, so that was brought to bear on the Mohammedans. This caused a huge controversy among Sunni Islam because it it led to a um a movement called the mutazilites and they applied logos they applied greek logos which is they basically applied greek logic basic logic basic metaphysics to uh the quran to sunni the sunni islamic tradition and it caused a huge controversy because they realized that there were all these contradictions in the quran that didn't make sense and this is the the figures of Averroes and Avicenna. They're the ones who passed down Aristotle in Arabic, which is also translated into Latin. So it gets transmitted via the Syriac Christians, Syriac from Syriac, taking the Greek into Arabic and then into Latin. But there's also other transmissions not through the Arabs, but that's how that transmission of Aristotle took place to a large degree. And uh, this man named El Ghazali, and I, it's funny, I always remember, speaking of 11-11, I always remember his birth year because, or death year because he died in 11-11. So 1,111 that year, he died in that year. But this is this shows you where, where the Arabs were at with Aristotle because that it's only in the 1200s. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas dies in 1224. And I think St. Albert actually out, outlives him, actually, because um, St. Thomas died in sort of a freak accident. Uh, in God's providence on his way to the Council of Leon too. But what St. Albert does, so the Mohammedans, the, the point is the Mohammedans cannot use logos. They can't use it because it destroys their religion. And Al-Ghazali, he writes, uh, he writes a, a work called The Incoherence of the Philosophers. And he just utterly destroys and dismisses Avicenna and Averroes and thereby destroys Greek logos and any place that Greek logos could have in the Islamic tradition, at least the Sunnis, the Shias are a different story. The Shias actually do take uh, logos. And this is something that E. Michael Jones has dealt with a lot of Shia stuff, but the Shia are really different than the Sunni in this sense. So El Ghazali causes Greek logos to be just utterly dismissed and destroyed. And there's no, uh, there is no, tradition of logos that gets integrated into the islamic tradition now total side note but also related to dr jones is the fact that maimonides aka rambam moses maimonides who is the jewish scholastic in contrast to the el ghazali maimonides actually does take logos and he does integrate it into rabbinic judaism and this is telling i think because it shows that there is a, a integrated cultural uh, uh, artifact of logos that really comes from the revealed logos, which is divine in the Old Testament. And, it, and it, it allows that tradition to be integrated into rabbinic Judaism. Now, not without controversy, but the point is, this is totally different than what Al-Ghazali did. So, um, what happens is Aristotle gets transmitted over to St. Albert the Great and St. Thomas. 
And E. Michael Jones shows in his chapter, this is chapter seven, the beginning of science of Logos Rising. He shows how the very basic metaphysical uh, philosophy of Greek Logos was necessary to create science. You in terms of developing the scientific method, because you it's all about cause and effect. You have to understand that there are secondary causes in the universe. There's the first cause, which is God himself, but then God creates the universe with certain laws and they have cause and effect and they, they function based on certain principles and certain logos, logi, and the Mohammedans rejected all that. But the Christians understood it and they applied it and they created the development of science. So Christians developed the scientific method and this is what ultimately creates the, the downfall of the Mohammedans. Because later on, when the Ottoman Empire is, is knocking on Europe's door in the late 1600s, 1683, 1697, Battle of Zenta, September 11th, again, by the way, the, the Turkish Empire just has to admit defeat because Western Europe is just so much more advanced technologically, culturally, all the different things. And it's because of the development of science. So all, it's all, and it all goes back to St. Albert the Great, who helps to develop this, this, this proto-scientific method. So St. Albert the Great is, we can certainly call him great because he helped to defeat the Mohammedans. It took another, you know, 400 years, but developing the scientific method was the, the key difference. All right. Then we have St. Gertrude the Great, uh, a great monastic saint mother of nuns uh and uh i wish i could say more than i than i said about saint albert there but i i don't i'm not an expert on her but we've got saint gertrude the great i know she has a uh, a very very early devotion to the sacred heart and that's a that's a big thing as well um so i just wanted to mention two things real quick and then we'll uh get on with fighting the world the flesh and the devil with this exciting week um and that is just want to remind everyone that we have a new series called Preparation for the Holy Sacrifice. You can see you can see the the um, previews here. So Preparation for the Holy Sacrifice is our weekly guild stream. And so the previews are coming out uh, on the weekend. But this is where we celebrate the news by uh, a particular theological and spiritual framework and that is thanking god for his providence over the week so all the news that happened all the controversies whatever it is we're going to start by thanking god for his providential ruling of the world you know everything that happened everything that he permitted to happen is under his providential governance and so that's how we talk about the news and then we offer this to almighty god in the holy eucharist and so every week we talk about three major rites of the church, the Latin mass, the Greek rite, as well as the new rite of Paul VI. And we talk about the gospels and how that relates to us. And then we talk about all the news. So this is our weekly guild stream. God willing, I'll continue to do it on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's the that's my hope. But um, sometimes I'll need to change that due to uh, family commitments and whatnot. But the other big thing is that we are reading through this book right here. This is called... We go to Ladder of the Monks, and this is the origin of Lexio Divina, because this is part of our Fellowship of St. Anthony group, where we read through the entire Bible, many of us do, but at least we offer up this penance. I'm really excited about this, so if you want to be a part of Fellowship of St. Anthony, you get these audiobooks as well. So you got to chip in for the apostolate, send some money to us so we, we can help our, pay our bills for the apostolate, but then you also got to offer up some penance. And then you can also get these audiobooks. So we got the other two ones we went through were um, Difficulties in Mental Prayer, which is a really helpful book. I've really I've read it twice. It's been very helpful. As well as uh, Into the Deep by Dan Burke. So this is the one we're reading right now on Lexio Divina. So as always, reach out to me. And uh, this guild is all about supporting Catholics. So Lastly, I want to promote our what we're trying to support is one of our guild members, which is his GoFundMe. I should have started with this, but I'm sorry I didn't. Um, so his GoFundMe is currently at 63%. So if you can chip in something for our guild member to help him avoid homelessness, we would be most appreciative. 
please click on the link and donate anything you can. We're at 63 percent. Uh, they're trying to avoid homelessness. So please click the link, chip in something for them. We'd really appreciate it. So with that, let's offer up our week. Let's offer up everything that's about to happen. Like uh, Solanus Casey says, we need to thank God beforehand. Let's thank God beforehand for everything that's going to happen this week. And then at the end of the week in our guild stream, we'll thank God for everything that did happen in his providence. Let's pray. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre, Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. St. Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. In omni patris, et fidi spiritus sancti, Amen. Jesus is King.